All right, so in this problem, I have 30 to the power of 90 over 90 to the power of 60. So to solve this, I'm going to first rewrite 90 here as 3 times 30. So now I have 30 to the power of 90 over 3 times 30 to the power of 60. Now, if I have something in the form a times b to the power of m, this is equal to a to the power of m times b to the power of m. So in this case, I have 3 times 30 to the power of 60. And that's going to equal 3 to the power of 60 times 30 to the power of 60. Now, I can rewrite this as 30 to the power of 90 over 3 to the power of 60 times 1 over 30 to the power of 60. And if I have something in the form 1 over a to the power of m, it's the same thing as a to the power of negative m. So 1 over 30 to the power of 60, that's going to equal 30 to the power of negative 60. And now, I can put this as 30 to the power of 90 times 30 to the power of negative 60 over 3 to the power of 60. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So in this case, I have 30 to the power of 90 times 30 to the power of negative 60. So this is going to equal 30 to the power of 90 plus negative 60. And now I have this over 3 to the power of 60. Now 30 to the power of 90 plus negative 60, well, that's the same thing as 30 to the power of 90 minus 60 because a positive and negative make a negative. And 90 minus 60 is 30, so I have 30 to the power of 30 over 3 to the power of 60. Now 3, 3 to the power of 60, that's the same thing as 3 squared to the power of 30. And 3 squared is equal to 9, so I have 30 to the power of 30 over 9 to the power of 30. So now if I have something in the form a to the power of m over b to the power of m, this is equal to a over b to the power of m. So this is equal to 30 over 9 to the power of 30, which is equal to 10 over 3 to the power of 30. So this is my answer. All right. So in this problem, I'm actually going to prove that 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. So I have, I'm going to first actually start with 0 is equal to 0. And this is obviously a true statement. Any number is equal to itself. Now, for my left-hand side, I'm going to rewrite the 0 as 20 minus 20. Because, well, anything minus itself is 0. And now for my right-hand side, I'm going to rewrite the 0 as 25 minus 25. And this is obviously legal because 20 minus 20 is 0, 25 minus 25 is 0. Now, 20 here, this is equal to 4 times 5. So now I can rewrite 20 as 4 times 5 minus, again, 20, I can rewrite as 4 times 5. And for my right hand side, I'm going to rewrite 25 as 5 times 5. And again, I'm going to write this as 5 times 5. Now, from here, if I factor out 4 from my right-hand side, I get 4 times 5 minus 5. And for my right-hand side, if I factor out 5, I get 5 times 5. 5 minus 5. 
Now, if I divide both sides by 5 minus 5, well, these two cancel out, these two cancel out, and I am left with 4 is equal to 5. And 4 is the same thing as 2 plus 2, so I have 2 plus 2 is equal to 5 as well. So, I just proved that 4 equals 5 and 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. Now, we obviously know that this is not right. 4 does not equal 5. So, where did I go wrong? Well, if you notice over here, I divided both sides by 5 minus 5. Well, we know that 5 minus 5 is 0. So, this is the same thing as 4 times 0 is equal to 5 times 0. And if I divide both sides by 5 minus 5, or also 0, well, I can't cancel out 0 and 0 because 0 divided by 0 is not 1, it's undefined. 0 divided by 0 has no definite value. So I can't cancel these out, this is wrong. Meaning this is wrong as well, and 4 is not equal to 5. This proof is wrong. Alright, so in this problem, I have 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x is equal to 1. So I want to find the value of x. Oops, sorry. I want to find the value of x here. So for my solution, first start with 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x is equal to 1. Now from here, because there are 4, 4 to the power of x is on my left hand side, I'm simply going to factor out 4 to the power of x. So I have 4 to the power of x times, now 4 to the power of x divided by 4 to the power of x is 1, so I have 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 1. Now, if I simplify it to the parentheses, I get 4 to the power of x times 4 is equal to 1. Now, 4 here, this is the same thing as 4 to the power of 1. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So 4 to the power of x times 4 to the power of 1, that's going to equal 4 to the power of x plus 1. And this is all equal to 1. Now, if I have something in the form, or sorry, anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1, meaning I can replace 1 here with 4 to the power of 0. So now I have 4 to the power of x plus 1 is equal to 4 to the power of 0. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now, this is a simple equation to solve. All I have to do is subtract 1 on both sides, and I get x is equal to negative 1. Now, I actually have a second method of solving this problem. So I again start with 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x is equal to 1. And now I'm going to factor out 4 to the power of x again. So I get 4 to the power of x times 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Now I have 4 to the power of x times 4 is equal to 1. And now this time, instead of multiplying these two, I'm actually going to divide both sides by 4. So then these two cancel out. And now I have 4 to the power of x is equal to 1 over 4. Now 1 over 4, that's the same thing as 4 to the power of negative 1. And if I have something in form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, x is equal to negative 1. 